Good morning. My name is Bruce Campbell. I'm the Executive Director of the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. The conventional narrative about the performance of, Canadian, of Canada's big banks during the financial crisis goes as follows. While American banks bet heavily on subprime real estate and had extensive shadow bank holdings, Canadian banks did not. Due to Canada's more conservative banking culture and better regulation, Canadian banks, the story goes, didn't need a bailout. The bank's strength allowed them to come through the crisis with relative ease, needing only liquidity support from the government. However, the details of exactly how much each Canadian bank received, when they received it, and what they put up as collateral has remained locked away at CMHC and the Bank of Canada. Not even access to information requests have been able to free this information. Today, the CCPA is publishing a study by David McDonald, The Big Bank's Big Secret, which provides the first public estimates of the emergency funds taken by Canadian banks from CMHC, the Bank of Canada, and the U.S. Federal Reserve. The report bases its estimates on publicly available data from CMHC, the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, the U.S. Federal Reserve, the Bank of Canada, as well as quarterly reports from the banks themselves. The report was subjected to external review by four economists. I'll now turn it over to the report's author, David McDonald. Thanks, Bruce. I think a lot of Canadians would be surprised to learn that Canada's banks drew support from not one country but two during the financial crisis, Canada and the U.S. And I think a lot of Canadians would be surprised to learn that Canada's big five banks drew on support for not a short period of time but an extended one from October 2008 through April, or sorry, excuse me, through June 2010. In fact, over the one and a half year period the Canadian banks uh, drew that support, they drew it much longer than the, uh, than the length of the crisis itself. And I think a lot of Canadians would be surprised to learn the extent of the support received by Canadian banks. In the report that we're publishing today, I estimate that at peak, Canadian banks received $114 billion worth of support. This figure is equivalent to 7% of Canada's GDP, or the size of Canada's economy, in 2009. Put another way, the support was worth $3,400 for every man, woman, and child in the country. For comparison's sake, the bank support programs were worth approximately 10 times more than the auto bailout programs for which Canadians put up $14 billion and for which the loan portion has been repaid. During the financial crisis, Canadian banks drew support from not one, not two, but three separate programs in Canada and the U.S. The first was from the U.S. Federal Reserve, from which they took loans worth at peak $33 billion converted to Canadian dollars. Second is loans from the Bank of Canada, from which they took $41 billion at peak. And third, CMHC purchased $69 billion worth of mortgages from the banks over the support period. As you can see from the chart on my left, the three largest recipients of aid were Scotiabank, Royal Bank, and TD Bank, receiving uh, an estimated $25 to $26 billion at peak. CIBC received somewhat less money at $21 billion at peak. And the Bank of Montreal, for its part, received an estimated $17 billion at peak. While the bank values cluster around $20 to $25 billion, the size of the banks is in, is in fact quite different. Royal Bank, for instance, is Canada's biggest bank, and in fact, the biggest publicly traded company in the country. Whereas, for comparison's sake, the Bank of Montreal is about a third the size of Royal. And so when we look at the amount, of aids, the amount of aid received, it's important to adjust those figures for the size of the banks. And I think there it's really where we see the depth of the crisis for Canadian banks. 
On the relative chart to my right, we can see that three banks, Scotiabank, Bank of Montreal, and CIBC, at some point during the financial crisis, received aid worth more than the value of the companies themselves. Put another way, each of these three banks, at some point, it would have been less expensive to have purchased every single one of the shares in those banks rather than provide them with the support that they received. And so while our politicians were trumpeting the soundness of the Canadian banking system on the global stage, three of Canada's banks were at some point underwater, relying on government support programs to get by. CIBC, in particular, received an estimated peak one and a half times the value of the company, and I estimate that for the first three months of 2009, spent the better part of that period underwater. The federal government claims that it was providing liquidity support and acting as a backstop. However, the details released today, and with the details released today, it looks a lot more like a bailout to me. Whatever we call it, it's clear that the support provided for Canadian banks was much more substantial than Canadians were led to believe. It is worth noting over the aid period that Canada's banks declared $27 billion in profits between them. The CEOs of each of these banks were among the highest paid CEOs in the country. And finally, between 2008 and 2009, Canadian CEOs uh, actually saw a raise. Every single one of them saw a raise, and the average raise was 20% in total compensation. I'd like to point out three other crucial details. First, the Bank of Canada and U.S. Federal Reserve loan programs, the monies that were taken out, were all paid back by July 2010. Second, the mortgages purchased by CMHC will mature over the next two years, by 2014. And third, in retrospect, there was little likelihood of aid providers losing money uh, in these programs. As with U.S. bailout programs, the U.S. TARP program, uh, and the auto bailouts, monies were paid back with interest. In Canada, we call these programs backstops, whereas in the U.S., they call them bailouts. In Canada, we still do not know the secret values behind how much each bank borrowed, but in the U.S., those values are public. It is time for the government to come clean on exactly how much each bank received, when they received the money, and what they put up as collateral. A healthy and resilient banking sector cannot operate behind the shroud of secrecy. The details of the massive taxpayer support for Canada's big banks should be made public in the interests of transparency and accountability. Efforts should be made to determine why some banks required so much more support, particularly on a relative perspective than others. And the results of this exercise should be used to strengthen banking regulation so that the need for this type of support is lessened or eliminated in the future. In summary, the banks took $114 billion at peak from not one country but two, from not one program but three, for not a limited period of time but an extended one, and that support at points was worth more than the value of the banks themselves. Thank you. Um, I'd be happy to take your questions in English et en français. <laughs> Je sais que vous avez expliqué là, que vous avez dû baser votre étude sur un ensemble de documents là, oui, euh, qui étaient accessibles, mais monsieur a quand même précisé qu'il y a un aspect de tout ça malgré l la loi de l'accès à l'information, il y a des documents que vous n'avez pas eu. Ma question c'est simple, jusqu'où tout ça est, comment dirais-je, euh, le, le, le plus vrai de la réalité possible? Qu'est-ce qu qui vous permet d'appuyer vos chiffres sur des faits réels? Bien sûr. Alors, qu'est-ce qui se passe? C'est que, à l'attente à, à des, des, des soutiens pour les, pour les, pour les grands banques, euh, le montant d'argent qui, qui a été dépensé pendant une un période de temps euh, plus ou moins euh, très strict, c'était possible de voir si tu regardais euh, aux correctes lignes dans les, euh, dans les rapports des, euh, des banques, euh, dans le rapport financier. C'était possible de trouver euh, où cet argent-là euh, allait. Alors, quand, par exemple, euh, SCHL euh, achetait des, euh, des hypothécaires euh, des banques, euh, tu pourrais voir quand ces, quand ces achètes-là commençaient. C'était possible de voir sur les euh, rapports des, des banques que leur ligne de, de le montant des hypoth hypothécaires qu'ils euh, vendaient montait rapidement. Et qu'est-ce qui était intéressant, c'est que c'était possible 
de prendre tous les chiffres, toutes les estimations que j'ai fait ici de, de chacun de les banques et comparer ce total-là euh, au, 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 à, mon, à le montant que, par exemple, le CSHL euh, a dit qu'ils ont acheté dans, par exemple, par exemple une un, un période de, de trois mois. Et si ces montants-là étaient plus ou moins le même, euh, étaient plus, plus ou moins le même niveau, ben là, on pourrait dire, euh, on, a, on, a, on a correctement estimé. Mais tu as raison que ce sont des estimations. Euh, les, euh, les, les, euh, la vérité, vraiment, euh, réside, euh, ça existe avec le Banque du Canada et le SCHL. Et je pense à ce point-ci, quand on commence à voir le goût euh, de la profondeur de la crise ici au Canada pour nos banques, euh, je pense que c'est le temps de publier ces numéros-là euh, pour qu'on qu puisse tous euh, savoir la vérité de qu ce qui s'est passé. Of, there's 114 billion dollars, and you're saying the government needs to come clean with more figures. Do you think that this would be, when we get the real figures from the government, if it does, uh, in your words, come clean on this, do you think it would be far greater than 114 billion in, in what's been given to our banks? No, the 114 billion is the publicly available figure on how much the total is. So it's definitely not going to be more than 114 billion. Uh, so the, the aggregate amounts for each one of the programs are known. Uh, and you can, you know, you can look those up on the website. But it's the details, the, spe the specifics where it's very interesting, and the specifics of which bank received how much, when they received it, and what they put up as collateral. Those details are not public. Uh, you know, I talked to both the Bank of Canada and CMHC and asked them to, to release this data. Uh, to CMHC's credit, they said that they, that they might release this data in the future, although they haven't done so so far. Uh, and in the Bank of Canada, they said, you can access information this, this information if you'd like, Uh, but we've refused similar access to information requests in the past. And so I think, and so in the absence of the actual figures, uh, you know, I've gone through the exercise of attempting to calculate those figures, and I think that it is possible to, to calculate them, and that's what we're releasing today. Were you able to do an update in terms of where things stand now vis-a-vis -vis these figures? So as I said in my presentation, as of July uh, 2010, all of the programs had been shut down. So the Bank of Canada and the U.S. Federal Reserve programs had been shut down, and CMHC had stopped buying mortgages. So uh, by that time, the U.S. Federal Reserve and Bank of Canada programs had been paid back by July 2010. Uh, the mortgage purchase program through CMHC is different in the sense that it's not a loan program. They were purchasing assets. They were purchasing mortgages. Uh, and so, so those mortgages mature over a variety of different periods. But CMHC is reporting that they will... Uh, That, that maturation period will be essentially complete by the end of 2014. Uh, and so I think, I think what's interesting here is that while this is in some senses a successful support program in the sense that we didn't see a, a cash crunch in the banks, the details particularly of, of how much each bank needs relative to its size I think are very concerning and something that we haven't seen before. And so that's, that's something that we're releasing today. And you're not arguing that it didn't work. You're arguing it wasn't transparent. Oh, yeah, it, it clearly did work, and it, it clearly was far more necessary than I think Canadians have been led to believe. I'm clearly looking at the figures compared to the size of the companies when, you're, when it would have been cheaper to have purchased every single chair in a company rather than provide it with support. Uh, that's not the message that Canadians were told. Uh, it's a very different message. Uh, and so um, I think it's time now for the, for the actual numbers to be released to validate this analysis or to, uh, or to correct it, as the case may be. In layman's terms, I mean, uh, Canadians may look at this and say, okay, well, we gave these banks uh, money and, and they were bailed out, but everybody survived. We didn't see what happened in the U.S., so everything seems fine. Why should they be concerned, especially with these three banks here? Why should average Canadians be concerned with what's going on here, aside from just the transparency factor? Well, because, I mean, first of all, because this wasn't the message that they were told. Our politicians are on the global stage touting the soundness of Canada's banking system, where at the same time, three of Canada's banks were at some point underwater, and I think that's extremely concerning. The other piece of the puzzle that I think is very important is that we can't learn from uh, this crisis in terms of how to make our system more sound if we don't have the details of what happened. Uh, and it's only with those details that proper analysis can be, can be done, and, and we can learn from those lessons. If we just bury this information, nothing can be learned, and so we can't strengthen the, the, the Canadian banking system. So do you have any suggestions at all, or is it because we don't have the information you can't even provide possible solutions to these issues? Well, yeah, I, I think at this point, let's, let's, let's start with stage one. And stage one is uh, 
uh, that CMHC and the Bank of Canada released the actual information of how much the bank received, how much the banks received, when they received it, and what they put up as support. And I think then once we can see the, the, the details uh, of these bailouts past the past the estimates that, that we've published today, then we can start talking about what we might need to do to strengthen the, the banking system. There's only the estimates for each bank, or how do you calculate uh, that? That's right. Uh, so so uh, this report, they, they are estimates. They're based on, uh, they're based on uh, calculation of, of, of two or three of the bank's key financial lines. And what you can actually do is you can watch those lines, and at, at the point, for instance, when CMHC was purchasing mortgages, you can see the amount of mortgages sold by the banks spike in, in the quarters that CMHC was buying those mortgages. And what's interesting in this exercise is you can actually aggregate all of the banks, the estimated number from the banks, for a given period, a quarter, or a month, for instance, and you can compare it directly to what CMHC said it purchased. And in fact, the numbers are shockingly similar. They're within 5 or 10%. Which, which leads me to believe that the estimates are, are largely correct. That, that you know, when CMHC was buying more mortgages, I'm estimating that the banks uh, you know, were selling more mortgages. And when CMHC was buying less mortgages, the banks appear to be selling less mortgages. Uh, and you can actually see this matchup. And so you know, there's a, a third of the report is, is purely a methodology of how this was calculated. Um, but because you can actually check your figures at the end, uh, and they're relatively close, uh, I'd argue that these are, these are good estimates, although uh, in the end, I think we need CMHC and the Bank of Canada to publish the actual figures so that we can, uh, so, so that we can get the truth, in fact. The, the Bank of Canada? Absolutely. So I talked to both the Bank of Canada and CMHC. I asked the Bank of Canada if they would release this information. They said they, that they would not. Uh, I asked them if they'd release the information under an access to information request, and they, they told me that similar access to information requests had already been filed and that they denied them. And so I didn't waste my time. Uh, CMHC, for its part, uh, said that they had considered releasing this information and may well con may well release the information in the future, although they haven't done so to date. Did you also look at the fact that during this period, uh, the government's cap for CMHC insured loans rose from about three hundred fifty billion to about six hundred billion now? Uh, do you consider that a form of support uh, for the bank? I didn't specifically. The forms of support that I were looking at were purely cash support, and so. There are a variety of other supports that changed during this period. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, deposit insurance or the, 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 the rise in, in insurance from CMHC, as you correctly point out. But I was concerned more specifically with actual, actual money changing hands as opposed to, uh, as opposed to a potential uh, you know, outlay of capital in the future.